Widely regarded as one of the most exceptional strikers in history, Brazil's Ronaldo Nazario, referred to as O Fenomeno or R9, experienced a remarkable career marked by unfortunate injuries. Join us as we take a captivating journey through his incredible life and accomplishments. Before we begin, we kindly invite you to subscribe to our channel as your support enables us to continue providing you with top-notch content. In April 2008, an incident unfolded in Rio de Janeiro where a man was accused of threatening three sex workers. However, the case was eventually dismissed upon discovering that he'd been a victim of extortion. Nevertheless, this ordeal had severe consequences for him, resulting in a loss of $4.8 million in endorsement deals, a temporary strain in his engagement with his long-term partner, and subjecting him to harsh criticism and ridicule from the Brazilian media. Surprisingly, his devoted fans were unfazed by the controversy. Their sole concern was his recovery from knee surgery, eagerly anticipating his return to the football field in his homeland. Needless to say, this man was none other than Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima, arguably one of the greatest strikers of the modern era. This legend boasts an impressive collection of accolades, including three FIFA World Player of the Year awards, two Ballon d'Ors, and a remarkable tally of over 400 career goals. Ronaldo Nazario retired as the biggest what-if in the history of football. His illustrious career can be divided into two distinct parts, pre- and post-knee injury. Undoubtedly an all-time great, R9 accomplished a great deal, but considering the talent he possessed, he had the potential to retire as the greatest of all time. Nothing captivates sports enthusiasts quite like witnessing the rise of a brilliant young player with their infinite potential casting an irresistible spell. Ronaldo stands out as the finest talent of the past three decades, and arguably of all time. Cristiano and Messi were exceptional teenagers, but they did not have the same impact at such a young age. Only Pele, Diego Maradona and George Best can genuinely be mentioned in the same breath. In 1997, at the age of 21, Ronaldo became the youngest recipient of the Ballon d'Or, a record that still stands. He received 38 first place votes that year, far surpassing anyone else who managed no more than two. Furthermore, he broke the world transfer record twice before even turning 21. Simply put, his pre-injury years were nothing short of extraordinary. He displayed remarkable goal-scoring prowess, netting 44 goals in 47 games for Cruzeiro, 54 goals in 57 games for PSV, and 47 goals in 49 appearances for Barcelona, all before reaching the age of 21. During his debut season at Inter Milan, he found the back of the net 25 times in the league and reclaimed his status as the best player in Italy and the world, with a total of 34 goals in 47 games. However, tragedy struck in the following season when he suffered a devastating injury that kept him out of the entire 2000 and 2001 season and most of the two seasons surrounding it. Consequently, he missed over two years of football. The knee injuries he sustained during his time at Internazionale robbed Ronaldo of the explosive qualities that had positioned him as arguably the greatest young footballer of all time, a captivating amalgamation of speed, strength and skill. This is not to diminish Ronaldo's accomplishments in the latter half of his career, highlighted by his remarkable eight-goal performance in a single World Cup and his standing ovation as the first Ronaldo at Old Trafford. However, it's his recollection of his early years that evokes a sense of nostalgia even in grown men. In 2002, he formed arguably the most incredible attacking partnership of all time, the three R's. Together with Ronaldinho and Rivaldo, he led Brazil to World Cup glory. Once again, he was acclaimed as the world's best player before his transfer to Real Madrid, where he amassed an impressive tally of 104 goals in 177 appearances. During the mid-2000s, the term the original Ronaldo became a prevalent expression while referring to Nazario de Lima. Whether it was his fans, commentators, analysts, or anyone who had a reason to discuss the iconic Brazilian forward, they freely employed this term. The original Ronaldo served as a means of admiration and accolade, often used when acknowledging his remarkable feats on the field, which needless to say occurred quite frequently. However, it also had another purpose, to intimidate Cristiano, the promising young Portuguese player who shared the same name. It was a weird form of hate, directed at a talented youngster who'd committed no offence other than sharing a name with a legendary figure. By the time Cristiano joined Manchester United as a teenager in 2003, De Lima had already established himself as a 27-year-old superstar at Real Madrid. With his impressive resume, including two FIFA World Cups, 
two Ballon d'Ors and three FIFA World Player of the Year awards, it was evident to everyone who the superior Ronaldo was. However, two decades have passed since the summer of 2003, and it's quite likely that Cristiano has surpassed De Lima in terms of footballing prowess. The debate regarding who was the superior player during their primes will inevitably vary among different age groups. A typical father, for instance, might vehemently argue that De Lima was far superior, while a son would likely lean towards Cristiano. However, when it comes to overall greatness and career achievements, any unbiased individual, regardless of age, can easily recognize Cristiano as the true original Ronaldo in this regard, and the gap between them is significant. Cristiano Ronaldo continues to actively play football and is already hailed as one of the greatest players in the history of the sport. Objectively speaking, he can only be compared to the likes of Lionel Messi and Pele in terms of his impact and accomplishments. Interestingly, Paolo Maldini, a former AC Milan defender, widely regarded as one of the greatest centre-backs of all time, recently disclosed his top three players in football. Maldini's own exploits and heroics on the field are considered legendary by many. In discussing the greatest players he encountered during his career, Maldini singled out Lionel Messi, Diego Maradona and Ronaldo Nazario. Maldini had the opportunity to face Maradona and De Lima during his playing days. When you receive acknowledgement from the greatest defender of all time, it certainly solidifies your position on the list of the greatest players ever. When appraised qualitatively, Ronaldo effortlessly stands up to the scrutiny of modern times. The pace of the game may have evolved, making older footage seem relatively sluggish and clumsy. But Ronaldo's speed remains awe-inspiring even by contemporary standards. If you have the chance to do just one worthwhile thing today, I implore you to watch a YouTube video showcasing his season at Barcelona. Although highlight packages can sometimes be deceptive, re-watching a full match such as the 1998 World Cup semi-final against the Netherlands confirms the sheer threat and exhilaration Ronaldo exuded with the ball at his feet. You can sense it in the body language of the defenders, the fervour in the voice of ITV commentator Brian Moore and the roar of the crowd. Ronaldo played as if he was a winger, but he did so from a central position, which rendered him infinitely more dangerous. It felt as though he approached every attack with a 10-second deadline, igniting into action without warning for opposing defenders. His breathtaking 50-yard sprint during extra time in the 1998 World Cup semi-final, where he left Franck de Boer and Jupp Stamm in his wake before de Boer executed an immense recovery tackle, remains one of the most exhilarating moments in the history of modern World Cups. No centre-forward before Ronaldo possessed the same devastating and exhilarating style of play. While others roamed and ran with the ball, Ronaldo did it in a manner that left a lasting impact. He didn't simply get between the lines of defence and midfield, he got between the lines of defenders, whether with or without the ball. Instead of passing the ball through the eye of a needle, he himself squeezed through it. The Barcelona team he played for is often regarded as a remarkable coaching seminar, featuring great minds like Pep Guardiola, Luis Enrique, Laurent Blanc on the pitch and Jose Mourinho on the bench. However, Ronaldo didn't concern himself with intricate theories and tactics. While he had the ability to link play when needed, his true brilliance came when he defied the tiki-taka style. He would simply run through everything and score goals. His step-over move was like a form of hypnosis and his signature trick, the elastico, seemed like something straight out of a computer screen. One of his most memorable moments came in the 98 UEFA Cup final against renowned defender Alessandro Nesta. The match was built up as a clash between the best attacker and the best defender in Serie A. Ronaldo utterly destroyed his opponent. Nesta, who was an exceptional defender in his own right, recently admitted that Ronaldo in his prime was the most challenging player to mark, and this speaks volumes about his extraordinary abilities. Many attribute his early peak to the knee injuries he suffered, while others believe it was influenced by his lifestyle. Regardless, the romantic notion of what if has only served to enhance his legendary status. Jose Mourinho, too, recognizes Ronaldo as one of the greatest players in history. Despite a career riddled with injuries, R9 remains the second highest goalscorer in World Cup history and the second highest goalscorer for Brazil. Had he remained consistently fit throughout his career, he would have achieved even more, scoring more goals and winning more trophies. Such circumstances may have even eliminated the ongoing debate about the greatest football player of all time. While there are players who have achieved more in terms of accolades, nobody has successfully replicated Ronaldo's unique combination of skill, strength and astonishing speed. What do you think he could have achieved without injuries? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching.